A quick reaction to Real Madrid vs Real Betis. Also, we'll discuss Cruz' last match at Bernabeu. It was special. His, his kids in tears as he would leave the pitch to an incredible ovation at the Santa. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it finishes then Real Madrid nil, uh, Real Betis and nil. Uh, for more, uh, let's just take a look at the, how at the top of the table is helping then. We'll finish Real Okay, first of all, I would say it was kind of emotional when his family, like his daughter and his sons are crying. I'm personally not that emotional, but it really caught me, honestly. Also, look at the table. Like, no one talks about this. Despite we had one of the worst injuries probably in our history, like so many ACLs, we're finishing 95 points. That's insane. And here's the best part. We're finishing 95 points with a team that's in a moment of building, right? Once this team is built, I can't just wait to see what this team can deliver. Once we have Mbappe and we strengthen our defense a little bit, that will be insane to see how this team perform in Europe. Uh, Jürgen, really the big talking point wasn't what happened in that 90 minutes, but Tony Cruz bidding farewell to Real Madrid, where he had such success, and they seem to do it in exactly the right tone. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not by coincidence that he decided now, just a couple of days ago, to tell everybody that he will leave uh, Real Madrid and he will leave the, the professional side of kicking the ball around <laughs> um, after the European Championship then in Germany. I mean, what an, what an amazing career he's had. I mean, 22 titles with Real Madrid, you know, then he won his titles with Bayern Munich and obviously he's a World Cup winner. So, I mean, the only thing that is really kind of lacking still is the European Championship. So, oh, yeah, let's, yeah. let's see if he can can help Germany <laughs> your jets. to guide Calm to the down, European Jürgen. Championship We're not there this, yet. <laughs> this summer. Yeah. But what a career, guys. I mean, he's he's spectacular. What, a, what an outstanding player. Uh, Luis, what scenes here, especially his kids in tears? So, lots of points to discuss today. First of all, is it the right time for Tony Cruz to retire? Because he's 34 years old. Given the way he's playing, he can easily play three or four years, easily. And he will be still in his prime. Now, is it really the right decision for him? Again, that's his decision, right? But one thing I'll say, I have huge respect for the players who retire at their best. That's why I have huge respect. Most of the German players, they retire at their best. Like you see Schoensteiger, he did the same. On, I think he was 30 or something. Now, Tony Cruz is doing the same. Zizou did the same. So, in my opinion, for his career, he has nothing to achieve. He won every possible title with Real Madrid. There's no challenge. So maybe it's best for him to leave when he's on high point. So the fans will remember only his ups. Everything. I think it's a, it's a very emotional just to see him uh, saying goodbye, seeing the kids. When you show this image, it kind of uh, it takes you back to, to those moments where you realize that, uh, that this is going to be the end. You're not going to be playing again at the Santiago Bernabeu. Uh, all those supporters, uh, that they've been next to you, all the memories, the fantastic memories winning the, the Champions League for so many times, La Liga, all the trophies, the, the teammates that you have there. Uh, so it's very emotional. I'm sure that he, he will continue focus and trying to achieve something uh, big uh, this uh, summer for the European uh, competition, the European Championship, but definitely he's a very special player. He's always been a gentleman on the pitch and outside of the pitch, never put his word uh, uh, in front of, of the team. He's always been about uh, the team spirit, teamwork. All this is really sad and his kids are making it more sad for us. Just think about for those kids, they grew up at Madrid, they made a lot, a lot of new friends, right? Now they'll probably move back to Germany, so totally new chapters. Also, regarding Cruz's career, I totally agree with Luis. The career he had, like how many players can dream of having five Champions League? Not many, right? And there's a good chance he might win another in a week. So that's pretty, pretty crazy, crazy career any player can dream of. Also, Real Madrid is going to miss Tony Cruz. I mean, simply, just look at our play style. Literally Tony Cruz, right? If we want to accelerate, if you want to build up, if you want to slow down the tempo, there's only one player 
that control the how we play. That one player who dictate our style. Real Madrid has a unique style. And that's mostly because of Tony Cruz. So this team will definitely miss him. Now the question is, is there any other player, a player who can do his role? I don't think there will be any other player that resembles to Tony Cruz. These players are generational. Like there will be not another Modric. There will be no another CR7. Those are only one piece in generation. There will be no Zizou. They are gone. Here's the solution. Yes, those players will leave. But it doesn't mean that we have to replace exact same player. Exact same player style. Look at Zizou. Do we have seen any player who resemble to Zizou? No, we'll never see. We have never replaced Zizou, right? Then you look at CR7. Have we replaced CR7? We will never replace CR7 because that's impossible. Because he's probably one of the best player, right? Those come only one time. Those are generational player. So in that sense, we'll have never any other player who will be like Tony Cruz. But that also means that this team will have different player and different player style. And that's called evolution, right? And in my opinion, one of the reasons why Real Madrid is so successful is because they don't stick to one single player style. They change depending on the situation, depending on the players. Special tribute to him. It was the opposite for you, wasn't it, Shaq? Your kids cried when you said you were going to continue. <laughs> My kids cried thinking that, oh, dad's going to be home all the time now. That's the trouble. They, they did it right though, didn't they? It seemed to work well and a nice tribute. Yeah, it, it really was to, to, to a player uh, absolutely fitting for, for, for such a send-off. For, and, and Lucy is absolutely right. For all the praises that we sing about Tony Cruz and we can should point to his trophies for, for his accomplishments, it's, it's somehow off the field or away from it there. He's never been embroiled in any controversy. He seems to carry himself in exactly the way people people like and, and acclimatize to. He's never brought the game into any kind of disrepute or any clubs that he represents into any kind of disrepute. Exactly the kind of, of role model we all hope that all footballers can be. So Tony Cruz has epitomized the great side of this game, both on and off the park. Also, if you talk about farewell on the pitch at Real Madrid, this is probably the best farewell I have seen in my generation. Like I can't talk about say Zizou or Brazilian Ronaldo, but I can talk about our generation. I haven't seen this kind of farewell. Like CR7, we did not see similar like this. We did not see say Ramos, we did not have the chance. We even did not see other generational players, say Casillas. This is the best farewell I have seen in Madrid. And Tony Cruz deserves this. About what you're going to miss with Tony Cruz on the pitch, but I imagine Carlo Ancelotti loves having someone like that within the dressing room to be a leader of those young players as well. Absolutely, and that was his major role over the last years, was... Uh kind of to, to make everybody feel comfortable, to tell them, you know, the, what the highest standards of Real Madrid mean, and to be kind of an extended version of the manager. And Carlo Ancelotti is a genius in doing that and giving a lot of trust into Tony Kroos and into his uh, experienced players uh, means a lot to the players as well. You feel then that you have to step up for your manager. You feel like you're part of this, this whole process. And that's what Carlo Carlos Ancelotti always did really, really well. Tony has been a player that always wanted to take responsibility, always wants the ball, he always wants to, to kind of be in, in charge of things. And uh, he's done that calmly, quietly, as Luis said, you know, made it look so simple, so easy in most of his moments. Um, but he can also be uh, a warrior. He can also mm. be kind of a, a guy that kind of, yeah, wants to wants to show physically also that, you know, there are moments in the game that you have to send out a signal. You know, maybe you have to make a foul uh, uh, and, and, and maybe some physical scenes that, that are not part of necessarily your nice, beautiful game. And, and Tony is capable to do that. So Cruz was literally a leader in our dressing room. So many young players, when they came in, that needed a player like Tony Cruz to help them, to make them better. Like, look at Fede Valverde. Look at his Instagram post about Tony Cruz. How emotional that was. And how blessed he was to play with Tony Cruz. And if you look at our attackers, Rodrigo, Vinicius, when they came to play for this team, 
Tony Cruz was one player who were telling them, okay, make a run. I'll give you a pass. Those are important lessons for their game. Away from Tony Cruz, we didn't learn much really from today's game. Carlo Ancelotti, Luis will be delighted that no one picks up an injury and Thibaut Courtois produced a couple of really good saves. Yeah, exactly. It's a job done. Uh, the, I think the, the most important thing was not to pick injuries, to have the feelings of the game, keep the rhythm of the competition, finish with in a good moment, say a farewell to, uh, uh, to Cruz and of course checking that uh, Courtois, that in that first chance of Real Betty when they uh, concede the goal, that that clearance with a player in front, it was maybe not the best one. But after that, he had once again produced a couple of fantastic saves, showing that he's in top form. He looks sharp, he looks focused and concentrated. That's what uh, would you expect from uh, one of the best keepers in the world. And I I, I, I gave 70-30 to Lunin just three weeks ago. And right now, probably I will say that he's 80-20 for Kutsua to play in the, in the Champions League final. So I think that he's a job done for Real Madrid. They won La Liga in a fantastic way. They've done it in style. And they are going to be once again favorite for that Champions League final. So perfect job for Ancelotti once again. Okay, first of all, thank you, Dan, for bringing this question. This is important because today we don't have to discuss our performance. Today it's not about discussing our performance. It's meaningless, right? However, a couple of points. First of all, one thing we knew in the last few matches that one player in terms of goalie is going to be Courtois, who is going to play. And today is another day. Courtois proves that why he deserves to play for Champions League over Lonin. Like he saved two important saves. Like prime Courtois. I think a few matches ago, a lot of fans were divided. Like some were saying Lonin deserved it. Some said, okay, Courtois should play it. Now I think most of us agree that it's Courtois who should play in the final period. Now, going back to the game performance, today's match, as Luis said, it's not about winning the game. It's about having some sparkness, having some game for the players who will play in the Champions League final. And today's starting lineup was exactly the team that we will see probably most likely in the final because Schwarman is injured, I think. So he's out. But Gamma has to play at CDM. So we saw the exact lineup that will play in Champions League final. One thing we have noticed that a lot of our attackers lacked a bit of sharpness, which is kind of expected, right? Because these players did not play last match. So it's kind of expected that they'll have a little bit less sharpness, which is understandable because going to this match, we did not need to win. All we wanted, okay, just play together. Maybe play together with Tony Cruz. Just have fun, that's all. And here's one good thing. Just because today Real Madrid played and they're going to play next week in final. So they played a game before the final. I think that has a little bit of advantage to Real Madrid over Dortmund. Being said that, the only one complaint I have from today's match is that I didn't like the way Carlo played so many players, like attackers, so long that we could sub off Vinicius, Rodrigo and give other younger players a little bit more time. Maybe play Hosselo. But anyway, it is what it is. Let me know anything about this match and also anything about Tony Cruz.